Not offline, I'm on right now. Log in right this moment. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> go so now I don't have to hear my echo let's chat over here. let's go back to the other chat Okay, let's get started and see if I can find the chat channel so we can actually talk about all this. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard doing this one way since I'm not going to be able to hear you guys. Microphone, so you don't hear my keyboard. Okay, if y'all can hear me, chat to me, and I'll just get started. We've only got about 40 minutes left anyway, so 
Might as well start and do something. Okay, so the goal today will be to, first let's play with the text adventure. Let's see what we're talking about here. This is what's called a deterministic chatbot, where you have, uh, or a finite state machine, where you're trying to transition based on user input from one state to another. The states are like rooms in a text adventure game, or, um, or even um, uh, uh, statements or states of mind for the, the chatbot that you're conversing with. So let's take a look at that. So let's try to run the, uh, the, the chatbot as it exists right now. And um, we're putting it in the query package under executives because we think that it'll be a nice uh, extension of what we talked about in chapter 12 of NLPIA. It's uh, it allows you to give some sort of higher level context and logic to what the, the behavior of the chatbot. Uh, let's see if anybody's got anything to say so far. Excellent. A couple people can hear me, that's good. Okay, so, um, so we've got this text adventure. I'll make it a little bigger. Um, perhaps you've seen this before. Um, this is a classic 80s game, uh, at least the start of it, that someone, uh, Aaron, someone named Aaron on GitHub put this together. Um, I've changed the name to Alice and tried to make it a little more, um, a little less triggering for, uh, for people. Um, there is a go outside, or we'll go outside and see what's out there. We can enter the forest. Uh, we're attacked by a wild beast, so we lost some health. Uh, we can hang around here and check our stats, but we might lose more health. Let's do that anyway. Uh, so we're at health nine. Oh, we didn't get attacked again. So let's get out of here, though. Um, go back to the hometown. You get the picture. So we can enter our cottage. We can rest, and our uh, and our health comes back up. So um, so that's how that's how that works. There's a couple problems with the chatbot. I mean, the, the text adventure at the moment. The things that we could improve on. Um, first, it's it's kind of shallow. There's only a few rooms, and um, and so it's not very challenging or fun. So we, we're going to work on that by making it data driven. So we've already done a lot of that. Uh, John May has helped me quite a bit to to extract a lot of the strings and put them into text files so that we can, um, and also the the graph of the connections between rooms and how things work. That's a lot of that. It's in data, but we need to do more of that um, in this session. Um, another thing we need to do is we need to change this, these sort of prompts of one, two, and nine to be more natural language strings. Um, uh, on our way there, we'll start with uh, single character commands like um, go outside. We might use G or O for that, R for rest, and S for stats. Um, and these will try to stay the same throughout all of the, um, the different so uh, since it's always nine, always means stats, that's kind of a consistent thing. Um, uh, I guess it would be better if we had like north, south, east, west, and an actual map of where things were. Uh, so we wouldn't have to, we could be more consistent about the go outside and or, or entering go, or go inside or go into the cottage, see. But let's start with just some changing of some characters. That seems like something pretty easy to do. So I'll give you a tour of the, the code real quick here. There's um, there's an adventure class. Uh, let's check out and see if anybody's got any questions so far on chat. No questions, okay. Um, so we got an adventure class. Uh, within that, the initialization part, we're, we're loading in a YAML file. So that's where we're getting this data that we're using to drive it. Um, we're getting, that's where we're getting the, uh, the messages. So those are the strings. I don't think we're yet using the um, there's another, there's two files actually. There's a, a messages YAML file, and I think there was a CSV for the transitions. So I think we're doing that separately in a separate file. So here's, there's a lot of code that handles a lot of the state transitions. So we're gonna also eventually try to get rid of a lot of that and make it in data. But there's this additional file called uh, text adventure, which is a CSV at the moment. Uh, and this contains the actual graph connections, the, which rooms are connected to which rooms, which actions you can do when. So uh, we're also reading that in. So I guess the read uh, text adventure function is handling that. I wonder if we're using that in a net. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to do. I wanted to move that to a net. So that was that to do one, uh, John, that we were looking for. I think that's the one that I'm missing. 
So I'll go ahead and do that, and we'll do it first, since it's to do one. The original code, as you can see, had these transitions manually set up. Um, these were actual strings rather than variables, so we, we gradually migrated it by changing them to variables, and then from there, changing it to, uh, to an actual file that could be loaded into a data frame. So, uh, so I can get rid of all of this now, uh, now that we understand what's going on there. Um, and we'll look at that, uh, that transitions file. It's in, in, for the query package, that's within the uh, uh, fact quest directory. Um, that's where we're, the reason why we're building all of this is to build a, a text adventure for kids to help build their critical thinking skills. Um, well, let's see, so here are those, um, those act, the messages, and here are the, the transitions. So this completely defines the graph, all the things you can do and all the actions you can do with each one of them. Um, the, the actions tend to go, they transition back to the current state, they, but they just change some variables within that state. So if you were trying to create a really a finite state machine, you would need one state for every possible action in every possible state, in every possible room, I should say, of the adventure, plus all the different levels of health that you might have in that room, plus all the different um, uh, combinations of other variables that you might have there. Uh, I guess there's health, there's ammo, uh, um, there's your skill for melee as well. So all of those, all three of those variables would have a lot of different combinations. So you can see it would explode rapidly. So that's why it's condensed down to this different kind of architecture that's not really a finite state machine. It's not finite. It's actually infinite um, because you can have any, uh, the, the code could allow any level of health and any continuous value of any of those variables. And so the states are infinite, but anyway, we're going to treat it like it's a finite state machine and a graph. Um, it's, it's just these transitions go back to into that finite graph of connections between rooms. So the, the, the graph really only defines the rooms. And then we have some variables within those rooms that we'll deal with. Okay, uh, I think that's enough introduction there. We talked about changing these to, um, uh, to letters. Let's just see if that's possible this easily. Uh, so this would be, um, <laughs> I think this is rest up. So, uh, we'll call this rest, that action, uh, check stats. I think that's S, uh, that should be enough for, to get us started. Let's see if any of those work. Uh, I'm afraid it might not even run anymore because I think I may be converting those to integers, but let's see. Uh, that's the, the other thing I want to try is um, I want to create, create an automatic testing script that exercises all the different actions and all the different rooms and just walks around and does stuff. Uh, looks like it didn't display the right menu, but let's just see if those letters work. Okay, it doesn't work. Oh, maybe I didn't use G. It was uh, uh, hometown, I think it was. Yeah, that worked. So H worked when I put it in here, but I just need to be aware of the, the, the menus themselves need to take. Let's check out the, the messages. So this needs to be to the hometown. And so we'll call that H, we'll call that R. Don't think we need periods anymore. And then ultimately we could actually make those statements and then we can actually have an intent recognizer that could then uh, classify all the different things you might say like go outside or go to the hometown or just hometown so or just go so we might be able to have a lot of different ways to state this rather than just one one letter but the, the letter will give people um, some clues uh, so let's make that change and then I'm going to stop that particular edit because that's just a bit of busy work not the fun work of, uh, of building a text adventure. Uh, let's quit that and let's run it again. Um, you'll notice it's taking quite a long time to load. We're doing some fancy stuff for query that probably don't need to be doing for the text adventure, at least at this level. We're setting up uh, an elastic search. Let's go to the hometown and let's go back into the cottage and then let's rest. And uh, let's also do some stats. Those all looked like they're working. Excellent. 
So let's quit with Q and let's get back into business. Um, let's try, um, what were we doing before this? Oh yeah, to do number one. Let me go ahead and write that one down in the code. We'll commit what we've got here, but the to-do number one should go right up here in a knit. I want to load the actual state transition table up here. So to-do one. This is a uh, load state transitions here rather than in main. Uh, so I think that's a thing, unless I've already put that somewhere else among the other to-dos. Move to YAML, nested loops. Is there anything about that here? Ah, there it is. That's, I had that as number four. Okay. Well, I just made it number one. Um, let's see if it's going to work. So we'll take all of this. And what did we need? Yeah, let's make it like this. So I'm going to put this stuff inside of the init function so that they will have run. And then main will just call the run function. Let's do that here now. Any questions so far? I don't see anybody. I can only, I can't hear anybody's microphone, so it's going to be only chat over here. And I'm not on Discord either, so... You'll have to chat on the, the Twitch chat. So we're going to do self dot um, setup. We don't want to do. Um, and then we need to get attribute this one. This looks a little funky. What's going on here? My linter saying there's something wrong. Undefined named adventure. That would be self again. That might be all we need to do. Let's see if that worked. Uh, I wonder if there's any handy way to bypass this so we can speed up the run. Let's go into query and so we don't have to depend on the constants. And let's just actually define uh, the data DIR. Actually, I'll have to. Um, oops. Uh, it doesn't have any underscore transitions thing in adventure. Where are we using underscore transitions? Thank you, D3D and 2D. Or 3D. D3D. Uh, thank you for sticking with it. Um, let's see, we got, uh, well, I was trying to figure out this, this text adventure, the init function is not understanding underscore transitions. I didn't even know that was mentioned anywhere. Here it is. Okay. Ah, because we didn't initialize that before doing, we didn't, we didn't set up all the variables before we ran setup. Because setup self setup transition table. Oops, wrong one. That needs to go after the table is available. In fact, we could do this straight up in the, the transition table, I think. Let's see what setup does. It just goes through them all and creates for it creates a dictionary that contains the start state and the condition. And then that is a set to equal the transition. Uh, we could probably even do that in the init function, but I'll leave it here. Let's see if just or reordering things will make it work. So we now got this state dic dictionary. Where is this state used? Uh, State.update. So we can um, probably wait until further down. see if that will still work. Probably should not have moved a bunch of stuff at once, but oh well, it's done now. I think the, the setup is what's calling that underscore transitions. There it is. And since we hadn't created it, that's what was causing the error. So I fixed one error, but I may have created more. Let's also do that um, path 
to the uh, the data dir. Let's uh, ls query slash data slash fact quest, and let's do uh, let's make sure that's all set up for a, com a complete path. This is obviously not going to work long term, but this will work for now as we. Um, oops. Oh, it's inside of Tangible AI. Okay, maybe not. Query. Uh, query again, then data, then fact quest, maybe. Nope. There we go. What's inside of data? T, Q, there we go. Uh, so I think this will do it. I want to go to default. Oh, well, this is the data path that we want, I think. Oh, the data DR is just this. So I'll make that. A diff Instead of importing constants, this will save us a little time every time we test it. We don't need this anymore. So we don't need all of the query support with Elasticsearch and everything else going on in the background. So we'll just set this to a constant data. And this also won't work for you folks on Windows unless you're using Pathlib. I think I'm using Pathlib everywhere, but just but this may not work for you. So this will be a temporary stub. Not stub, but uh, workaround or speed up hack. So we're going to hack the heck out of this. And let's see if it runs a little faster this time. And let's also see, wow, super fast. Go outside, go inside. Let's rest. Let's stats. Looks like everything's working. Can't type exit, but I can type Q. Excellent. That'll probably be one of the first commands that I change. So that you can recognize all the different things like X and exit and Q and quit. So we'll, we'll do some NLP there eventually. Okay, so now we've got it working. So we've got to do one done. Let's find to do two. I mentioned some, oh, I already did some of the other ones with the characters. Let's see if there's some other to do's. I'll put a done next to this guy. And let's do the, look for the to do two. Uh, looks like John already took care of this for me. So we moved um, the battle scene into the messages for that. We moved those into um, the, um, the, the YAML file. Have I shown you the YAML file? Let me just show you what that battle one looks like. So the YAML, we can both, both of them can be YAML files. In fact, I'd like to combine them both into one YAML file. But, um, but let's see, see if we can find that battle state. There it is. So he created this message here. These top level ones are relatively straightforward. We use this you know, pipe symbol to start the multi-line. Then we just put in the text that was already in the code and we just put it into the YAML file. But it can get a little more complicated as he found out when we start doing like the conversations for the fishermen or battles with the fishermen, or if you accidentally um, throw rocks at the wrong thing or whatever. So we've got, um, so the fish convo, he had to create these additional variables and we're using the Django syntax for defining those so that they actually contain what the condition actually is in code. So if melee equals one, then this message will get displayed. And if melee is greater than one, then this message will get displayed. Pretty slick thing. That'll allow us to actually turn that, that variable name into code and ultimately get rid of all that code in the actual app. So. You also see that it's a nested uh, dictionary. So, uh, if you were, if these were normal states that didn't, there were finite states that we didn't have to. Ooh, is the performance increased primarily from simplifying the order of events or combining multiple functions? Uh, that's uh, that that speed up had absolutely nothing to do with uh, what I just did to the code, except for this one line here. So D three D. This is the line that caused us to. Uh, to, it was just the, the problem is well, I'm, I'm importing for this massive package called query that does a lot of really sophisticated natural language processing, like answering any question. It's called open domain question answering. So it can answer that by searching Wikipedia. But to do all that, it loads a bunch of stuff. And so we got rid of all of that by just setting the data GR here. Moving it into a net didn't really affect anything except the modularity of the code. So other people can reuse it and they don't have to, that way, 
There's no API that they have to figure out. They don't have to know what to do in order to get it running. They just have to create it and then run it. And, um, and so it's just simplifying the API, making it more object oriented. That's all. Um, anybody else? Uh, let's see, we've got um, the, thank you all for your support. Um, where we're on to do to, uh, there it is. Um, let's get, uh, so that's, um, I showed you how, what John did for that, for the battle and the fisherman, the fisherman convo. So he took care of all those to do twos. It looks like he also took care of a, another more complicated one. So there was a nested, nested one, I think for yes. Um, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Oh yeah, it does look like it's doubly nested. You can see that, um, the fish convo ones are pretty straightforward, but uh, the melee equals one, those are the other ones that he did. Uh, so he has a yes and a no, so it's doubly nested. Um, okay, I think that's all done by John. Thank you, John. Or Darth, whatever your name, Darth Pie Guy. Um, next, we've got... Uh, uh, to do five. Is that good? Oh, wait, what happened to three? Oh, we've already done that. And four? Oh, I got rid of four and made that one. So now we're up to five. So let's dry up the data and the YAML file for the first four simpler rooms. Uh, not a hundred. So I need to use a nested dick for the menu and description separately and Pi and YAML. Okay, so this, this would allow us to start having a separate text for the menu than we do with the actual description. Uh, let's do that. Um, it's, not really mod it's not really drying it up, but uh, dry means do not repeat yourself. We're not really eliminating any code or any eliminating duplication, but it, ultimately it will for those lines where we're doing the same thing, like, um, like rest and stats. These can, these can be, we won't have to repeat those if we have a separate menu thing. Let's see how that goes. Um, uh, let's try something like, uh, actually, let's just take the common ones that are available everywhere and just make those the only menu. Um, so we need, first we need to make this a description one. So we'll nest that inside of here and we'll call that description. Uh, and then, for, let, let's just do that first and let's not do anything else. And let's just make sure that we can correct the code to work correctly with that new architecture. And then we'll do that also with, um, with hometown and in in the first four, like it's stated in the to do. Okay, so that means we need to look for um, hometown. Well, let's see, where is it? Cottage, I guess it was. So instead of message cottage, we need to do message cottage description. And now let's see if it works. Looks like it, the description still worked. I'll make sure I can go outside and enter. All is well. Okay, now let's uh, go into, um, maybe that, that to do one should have been the, the testing. So I can do all those actions automatically and it'll just scroll by the screen and tell me if everything worked. Uh, that'd be kind of hard, though, when we're changing the actual text. Um, let's go ahead and set up the code to get ready for this description for um, a couple more. Hometown and forest. I called it root there. I guess that still needs to be the case. I've got a really, really nested thing there. Maybe I don't need that, but um, I'm going to leave that there as well. And I'll do that for the coast as well. So we've got coast, forest, root, cottage, and um, hometown, I think. Now let's go to the YAML file and make sure that's all set up. So here's the hometown. Uh, this would be, oops, let's get rid of that. And let's call this description. And let's do that for all of them pretty Got to put a space after the colon. Got to do this only after root, because that's the only one that I've actually worked on. Need to nest it a little bit. Great. Okay, um, let's make sure all that works. I'm not sure about these other, this is the kind of thing I want to ultimately have, where we have a separate menu key right alongside the description for each of them. 
Uh, so we'll have a def separate menu for root, um, then we do, well, we'll have a separate menu for coast, then we do for home and cottage and all. But maybe they'll share some shared menu at the top. We might create a shared menu option, including the queue command. So we don't get to see that one on all the menus. That might be handy. Uh, let's see where we're at. Did I share the save the YAML? Yep, YAML saved. No, lots, lots, and lots of problems. Um, looks like the, the problem is in the YAML file. Line 19, column 10. I love the way the YAML package calls out the errors in the YAML file. Uh, description. So it didn't like this. Why not? Why not? 19, column 10. Oh, 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 I did not put the multi-line escape. I wonder if anybody else caught that. Mr. Pipe on the hometown. Yes, you got it, man. Sweet. I should check chat more often. Woohoo! And that's all it took. If I'd been there faster, we would have been here faster. Uh, I want to check the, some other places, though. H, coast. Where have we get to the coast? Three at this in this case. Um, and there was the... And it was also the forest I need to check out. Let's go to the forest. All looks good to me. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back into the cottage and then quit. Uh, okay, so, so far so good. We got that, that to-do done. Let's look for some more. Um, where was I? Danger of sharing screen. Uh, so far. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry I missed y'all on the. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, we are at uh, to do two. I'll, I just need to glance over at chat more often. Um, here we go, to do five. So we've done this one. Done. One function for first four rooms without nested dicks. Okay, let's see how we do that. So those first four rooms, maybe I'm not gonna be able to do all four of them because I think we have a kind of a, a weird thing going on with the forest. Um, but I might be able to do three of them. I want to create a single function that can handle all three of those cases. Let's look at the simplest three functions. We've got, so seven, that's none of those are it. Uh, here's the cottage. That one looks simple. Um, back to full health. That looks pretty simple. Probably, uh, no, it has a, has a little bit of a stateness there. But hometown and cottage, we can definitely do that. Let's unify those into room. Def room self. And let's get the room name. And let's um, maybe, maybe we should call that location. No, let's call it, well, location or state. Um, and then, so this will be like name equals cottage, and we'll just default to cottage, just to, just so you understand why these things are here. Should probably use types things. What else do I? What are other arguments do I need? Probably not anything else. In fact, um, this could be. I was also going to use the function name under in here, um, uh, just by doing dunder name there, but. I'm not sure how well that would work. Uh, so anyway, we'll create this, uh, this function that passes in the name. And we should be able to get that from the transition table, I think. Um, so let's not get rid of the old ones until we have at least one of them working. Uh, we'll print ddent, and we'll just use the name here. And we'll always go to the description. And that should be okay. We can use, also do something clever here and do some gets. In case it doesn't have a description, well, 
It needs to always have a description, so that's not so bad. Um, yeah, but uh, when we get to this point where we're doing this stuff like health and um, we're looking for attributes, we can um, we can also earn, and for the menu item. So I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll ultimately use dot get, but I love using dot get on dictionaries to avoid um, avoid accidentally having a missing key. Uh, nobody's saying anything on chat. Good. Okay, now let's go with, uh, let's finish this up. So uh, let's make this one work just like where cottage works. So wherever we're calling cottage, let's see if we can fo follow cottage. Ooh, we might need to try except since location won't work for all of them. Let's see if we can do something inside of uh, uh, the actual... How are these things getting called? Oh, it's the trigger. This is where it gets interesting. Um, I may have to put an if statement and only do it for... Continue for true state country. What is it actually getting called? Like I say, we're looking for the key instead of transitions. So I can change, well, let me look at the CSV file. Let's see if it has redundant information. Like if I said location, then cottage, no. Oh, but yeah, see, the destination state seems to be repeated twice in the CSV. Uh, and so I think, I'm hoping, and like, like here, so this one is gonna, I, I'm gonna use instead of init, I think I might, um, or start, I guess this is the one that's, uh, now I'm confused, because I can't really replace that with location and have it go to the cottage. Oh, but I can have it, I can replace this with, a st uh, with location and have it call the location function, I think. And let's, um, and then it will have act available to it within this tra state transition table, the location, we just need to call that function with that argument. Uh, that's going to be the challenge. So how am I calling that um, self dot? Am I doing a get attribute anywhere? Current state command. Uh, let's find a get attribute. Get adder. Here it is. So it's looking on for the action, it's looking for it here, and it's actually adding that function itself to the transition table. So this will get that location function, but it's not gonna then call it. So I need to look for how we're using that, that fourth element of the transition table. I'd really rather this not be code inside of the transition table, actual functions, but uh, let's just see. Uh, this would be inside of the setup. That'll tell me where it's being stored. Current state is how that's being stored. And underscore transitions is where is the real deal. So start state, I think that's the, well, that's the first one. Yep, so that's where the function's being held there. So transition start state. So that's the one that I'm going to want to work with. Still no help over from you guys. This is pretty complicated. I can understand why there's no help. So start state in transition. Only got five minutes left. I might call this quit pretty shortly, but I'm almost there. Um, so it's going to call location. I just need to make sure that it's doing that. Let me look for how that's being used elsewhere, hopefully in the trigger command. Oh, it's not. Let's look and see if it's Let's see if we have another start state. Oh, wait. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the first element is the start state, but that now is held by, okay, it's not being used in trigger. Let's see what trigger does, def trigger. Uh, I want it to call location rather than cottage. It's the current state and then the command. Okay, yeah, this may, might be, I'm not sure if it's the command or the 
Okay, so trigger is being called with the command. Uh, I think that's just, oh, that's the, the one, two, three stuff. Uh, current state is the one that we want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's just, let's make it print out this statement where it says unknown state, and then it won't, won't, won't do any harm, hopefully. Um, uh, welcome to Alice's text adventure. Okay, so it didn't print out the full opening stuff. What does Alice's text adventure normally go? Oh no, yeah, yeah, it doesn't say you're in a college. So it never did the location one. So it wasn't able, but it, and it didn't print out the error message like I hoped. I was hoping this print statement would happen. Um, so, but nothing got while key. Can continue current self dot current state equals transition in state. This doesn't look like what we need. Maybe I need to do something with cur state. It's, it's setting that equal to start state. Huh. I just need to also, I need to call the state with um, arguments. It doesn't look, let's see if any of the other ones ever have arguments. It doesn't look like it's ever called those things with arguments. So calling location with arguments is going to be a tricky thing. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I can use the, the self to access the, the start state and actually do that here. Um, this is going to be crazy. I don't know if this has any chance of working. Not self.start state, but self.current state. What was that? Uh, trigger, trigger, trigger. Where'd you go? Can continue cur state. Self.cur state dot name. I might get lucky. And I'll just print it out just so that I can see. I think this is the um, location function. And then I'm going to want to print out the dunder name. And let's print that out. And y'all know F strings, I hope. I love F strings. So I don't even have to put a dot format or percent sign or anything. Just put an F at the beginning and let it figure it out. Let's see how this goes. Str oh, it's a string already. Oh, that's handy. Oh, maybe that it's doing more than what I wanted it to do anyway. So let's do it this way and then Let's also do that where I used it. Self, oops, self dot cur state. Where was it inside of the, oh, somebody's probably got some help. I think in state always isn't always a location. Okay, that's a good point, John. Thank you, DD3. Have fun. Uh, uh, trigger. This is where I thought I used it. Uh, I guess I didn't. Okay, looks like that's about it for today. Um, let me see if I, let's see if it prints it out at least. Yeah, oh, it's a knit. Okay. Um, so it's not actually, so wherever I've done location, that's failing. Let's go back to um, the CSV file. Let's fix that up to be start state, I think is what it was, or start. Let's try start. And uh, maybe that's that, that'll at least get things going again. 
So current state is init, and it doesn't transition to, say, start at any point. That's interesting. So I'll have to figure out how to use that init statement to ultimately get to the, the actual name that we need. Uh, why does it print the error, error message? Uh, what error message are we talking about? Um, I don't... Do, 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 do. It printed out the error message. Of this, if this is the one you're talking about, it printed it out because it wasn't a function. It, it wasn't an actual object in Python. It was a, it was a string. Um, and so that, uh, that strings don't have an attribute dunder name. And so it couldn't find that attribute. So it, uh, it barfed. Uh, bummer that they never stream me. Well, I'm gonna shut this one down. I'm uh, sorry that it didn't work out. Uh, perhaps I effed up. Uh, hopefully they didn't fail to give me the right key and it's the streaming key, but we'll worry about it some other time. Y'all have a great day. Thank y'all for joining me. Sorry it wasn't more productive.